Well, let's talk about uh, this next section, uh, the famous thorn. What are, what are some of the things people have said that they think his thorn might have been? Yeah, I think um, I've heard some uh, some scholars say that it might have been his eyesight. I've heard oh. some people say that it might have been his wife. Um, <laughs> like literally his wife is the thorn? Right, yeah. Um, I've heard some people say it's the Corinthian church. Um and, and judging by the tone and tenor of this letter, I think that that probably makes the most sense. Um, it seems like whatever we struggle with, we think maybe that was Paul's thorn because it's my thorn right now. Well, let's read it. Uh, 12, 1 through uh, 10. I must go on boasting. Although there is nothing to be gained, I will go on to visions and revelations from the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the 13th, the third heaven. Whether it was in body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know. But God knows. Was caught up to a paradise and heard inexpressible things. Things that no one is permitted to tell. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself, except about my weakness. Even if I choose to boast, I would not be a fool because I would be speaking the truth, but I refrain so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say, or because of these surpassingly great revelations. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why... For Christ's sake, I delight in my weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This this whole idea of the thorn and God's response to that really challenges um, a lot of our theology. Because, you know, what we expect is that, you know, that God, God is going to say yes. God is going to answer the prayer that Paul, I mean, if God's going to answer anybody's prayer, it's got to be Paul, right? Yeah. And that's not what happens. Um, like, and, and in so doing, like the recognition that the difficulty is where uh, the power comes from. And, and that's problematic. That's problematic. I mean, that's problematic if you, just look at anybody who God used in scripture. Uh, I guess there's a cave near Tarsus that they traditionally call St. Paul's cave. And the idea is, is maybe this is where he would go pray. And maybe this is where he had this vision. Yeah. And the vision was so awesome. He can't even tell if he left his body or not. And um, uh, uh, what do you make of the third heaven? Do you have any sense of what he's talking about there? No idea. Okay. <laughs> but in scripture, we see times when God goes from heaven and comes into earth and like Peter's vision of the, of the sheet lowered. Uh, but in this case, it's not that Paul gets a visit from the kingdom or the third heaven. He's actually taken there. <laughs> yeah. So it's not that something comes from there to here. It's something from here goes to there. And so Paul sees it. And uh, it's apparently so awesome that he can't even talk about it. He understands what hope is because that's where, that's where he's going to be eventually. It's interesting how he contrasts this vision of where he's going because he's been there. He got to visit there once. He contrasts that with where he currently is, which is in a pretty uh, pitiful state god won't even remove this 
thorn, you know, I was um, reaching down to pull a weed. Something was in the asphalt that just like stuck in my finger. And so my finger bled and it was, I don't know, like a little tiny piece of sharp rock or something. Oh yeah. It's in my thumb here, which, you know, this is the extent of my suffering. Um, and uh, I couldn't, it wasn't until I got home, I was able to get this little piece of rock out and I got a sewing needle and eventually dug it out and I couldn't relax until I can get that thing out of my thumb. Anything it yeah. touched was very tender. And you know, how that is, is you're stuck with it. Um, and then even though I created a gouge to get it out, just when I finally that piece was out, I could, <sighs> except for Paul, that thing is still stuck in him and he's not going to, apparently he's, apparently he's not getting it out. Apparently when he, uh, is martyred a little while later, uh, whatever that thing is, he's still having to deal with it. Mm. If grace is empowerment to fulfill the task God has given you, um, apparently whatever Paul was dealing with didn't stop the flow of empowerment through him uh, to accomplish these things that God wanted to do. God wants to do something in us more than he wants to rescue us from the circumstance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our prayers end up becoming a variant of, but mommy, why can't I have ice cream? Yeah. <laughs> Paul never gives up on them. Um, even when it's, even when it's hard, um, he's willing to say the things that are, uh, that are needed to be said. Um, And I think um, no matter how uh, in messy things can get, um, God can still show up in the middle of all of that. Mm -hmm.